Hi, I'm Dr. John Winston of Colorectal Surgery Services in San Antonio, Texas. I'm board certified in both colon and rectal surgery and general surgery, and I'm also a fellow in both societies of colorectal surgery and general surgery. We're located at 19288 Stone Oak Parkway, Suite A in San Antonio, Texas, and we also have a second office on the campus of Northeast Baptist Hospital at 8601 Village Drive, Suite 226. You can find us online at colorectalsurgeryservices.com or you can call us at area code 210-490-2828. What is constipation? There are a number of different definitions. Patients often ask me this question. Constipation can be defined as infrequent stools. Clients will describe themselves as only having a bowel movement once every week or two weeks. They'll also define constipation as difficulty evacuating the stool. Other definitions also include a, a bloating feeling in the abdomen or as well hard lumpy stools. Again, the definitions of constipation are quite varied, but in general, those are the four major categories. There are quite a few causes of constipation. They're often related to other systems in uh, the client's body. Uh, it can be due to diseases of the gastrointestinal system, such as colon cancer that can obstruct the colon. It could be due to the endocrine system if there's some problem with the different um, uh, glands in the body, uh, one's metabolism could be slowed down. Uh, it could also be related to the pelvic floor, the musculature, or the skeletal systems. Um, uh, there are many, many reasons to have constipation. It's a very common symptom, uh, so it's very important if someone's suffering from this, at least in a debilitating fashion, that they seek help so that uh, an appropriate workup can be done and a formal diagnosis made. Constipation is very common. Almost anybody can get constipated, but we do know that from a scientific standpoint, constipation is more common in older people. Some young women can get constipation, often related to childbirth and abnormalities of the pelvic floor. It's very common in this country. It's been said that about 2% of the population in the United States is constipated in some shape, form, or fashion. Now that doesn't mean that everybody needs to be worked up for constipation, but it does show that it's a very, very common problem. In order to outline a diagnostic plan and uh, a treatment plan, we have to do a number of tests. One example would be a colonoscopy. That's where a lighted tube with a camera is placed throughout the colon and rectum to make sure there's not an obstructing lesion, for example, cancer. We'll also often do what is called a barium enema. When we do those tests, we enlist the help of a radiologist. They do special x-rays to make sure there's not a blockage. Another test would be anal manometry. That's a test that we uh, do um, in the office. We place a catheter in the anal canal and we see if the patient can relax the musculature appropriately at the correct time. There's another test. It's called electromyography or EMG. That's where we place special electrodes on the patient's bottom. And we test to see if the nervous system appropriately responds to uh, commands from the patient's brain to tell the muscles when to relax. Another test is called rectal sensation testing. We place a small balloon into the rectal vault and we examine whether or not the patient can feel the balloon at an appropriate level. Another test is a radiology test. It's called defecography. We often do this with magnetic resonance imaging or just plain x-rays. Constipation can be treated differently depending on what classification that client falls into. For example, we often treat patients medically. That might include certain medications. Um, it might include something as simple as increasing the fiber intake or fluid intake. Some types of constipation require physical therapy and or biofeedback, again, a non-surgical treatment. On rare occasion, we enlist the help of a psychologist to help patients with their constipation, depending on the reason. Again, once we go through all the diagnostics, we on occasion, albeit rarely, find problems that are unrelated to the gastrointestinal tract, the colon, the stomach or the small bowel uh, complete. There's, there's no relation. For example, we on occasion find that there's an endocrine abnormality. So again, it's very important to go through a very, very meticulous diagnostic period uh, with diagnostic tests for each client. Uh, then there's also surgery. We try to reserve surgery for patients who have failed all best medical management. For example, surgery might include a pelvic floor repair, uh, repairing a rectocele, for example. 
We sometimes uh, collaborate with uh, urogynecologists, urologists, or gynecologists to perform these procedures. Often people don't get treated for constipation or don't seek help because they're embarrassed. It's not a subject that they routinely talk about around the kitchen table over dinner. Um, and as well, it's a very common sy symptom. Um, but what I try to warn patients about is that constipation, depending on age or other associated symptoms, could uh, indicate that there's something going on, for example, colon cancer. Uh, so as a result, you shouldn't be embarrassed to talk with your physician about your constipation so that a workup can be started. A number of different doctors treat constipation. Colon and rectal surgeons are quite skilled at diagnosing various forms of constipation and even treating various forms of constipation, particularly surgical intervention for constipation. Gastroenterologists who are medical specialists that uh, treat the gut with various medicines for various diseases also treat constipation. And then of course, uh, client's primary care physician are also a member of the treatment team. The staff and physicians at Colorectal Surgery Services strive to maintain a compassionate atmosphere and welcome our clients from the very first phone call to the very first visit.